Welcome to Better Review. In this video, I am going to talk about kidney of ox, horse, dog and pig. Kidneys are paired lobulated oval or bean shaped glands in ox, situated at upper cranial part of abdominal cavity and above the peritoneum, thus they are called retroperitoneal structure. Okay, so in all animals, kidneys are situated at the upper cranial part of abdominal cavity and they are present above the peritoneal, thus they are called retroperitoneal structure. One thing unique to kidney is uh, kidney of ox is that they are lobulated. Okay, bean shape is also unique. You can differentiate uh, the kidney of ox from that of horse on the basis of their shape, and the lobation is very unique to ox. It is not present in case of dog and horse. Okay, then kidney is a part of the urinary or excretory system, along with ureter, urinary bladder, and urethra. Superficially, each kidney is divided into a number of lobes by fissures filled with fat so you can see these are the fissures and they are dividing the kidney superficially into lobes okay and fat is deposited in these fissures it is placed in position by the particle fascia and pressure of the surrounding viscera then right kidney right kidney is placed between the proximal part of the last rib and first two or three lumbar transfer processes very important the location of the right kidney it is present or it is placed below the proximal part of the last rib and first two to three lumbar transfer processes so l2 or l3 lumbar vertebrae the right kidney is roughly bean shaped and flattened from above downwards it has two surfaces two borders and two ends the dorsal surface is convex and it remains in contact with the sub lumbar muscles ventral surface has the hilus at its cranio medial aspect again very important point because it can be used to differentiate between the left kidney and the right kidney okay so hilus in case of right kidney is present at the cranial medial aspect the ventral surface is less convex and is related to the liver pancreas duodenum and colon medial border is nearly straight and lies parallel with the posterior vena cava while the lateral border is convex so this is a sagittal section of the kidney of ox and this is the medial border it is almost straight but the lateral border is convex then cranial end is narrow and it is thick it is lodged in the avenal impression of the liver and remains in close contact with the right adrenal gland so liver then adrenal and we have the kidneys okay this is the orientation and the caudal end is rounded and free so you can uh, know which end is cranial and which end is caudal on the basis of the shape okay then left kidney left kidney is variable in position okay so when the rumen is full it is placed below and behind the right kidney at the level of the bodies of third fourth fifth lumbar vertebrae but when the rumen is empty it remains at the same level but lie partly on the left side of the median plane okay so the position of the left and right kidney is different okay they are both present on the right side when the rumen is full why because the rumen is very big it occupies most of the uh, space in the left side okay that is why the left kidney even in name it is even though in name it is left it is placed behind the right kidney in the right part of the abdomen okay in case of ox why because rumen is there but when the rumen is empty okay so the size is somewhat less therefore it will shift towards the left side okay left kidney is roughly pyramidal in shape it has three surfaces three borders and two ends the dorsal surface is convex and presents the hilus at the cranial lateral part okay very important hilus at the cranial lateral part in a fissure which extends obliquely from the lateral border of the cranial end to the medial border of the caudal end okay so location of hilus is very important in case of right kidney see here it was present on the ventral surface at its cranial medial aspect while in left kidney it is present on the dorsal surface at its cranial lateral side okay 
then ventral surface is convex and flat the ruminal or the medial surface is flattened by the contact with the rumen ventral border uh, is present between the ruminal and ventral surfaces and it is convex so it is formed by the ruminal and ventral surfaces the lateral border is formed by the ruminal and dorsal surface and it is slightly convex while the medial border is formed by dorsal and ventral surfaces and it is convex at its cranial part and concave at its caudal part cranial end is in contact with the left adrenal gland while the caudal end is rounded and free okay so again cranial is somewhat narrow thick in contact with the left adrenal while the caudal end is rounded and free then structure so each kidney is embedded in a large amount of peritoneal uh, parietal fat called the capsula adiposa then a fibrous capsule called the renal capsule covers the surface of the kidney then lines the wall of the renal sinus and is reflected as the tubular sheet around minor and major calyces and the renal pelvis okay renal capsule you have to remember that then renal sinus the hilus opens into a large cavity within the kidney occupied by vessels calyces and adipose tissue the ureter give uh, rise to two major calyces left and right into the renal sinus that further give off minor calyces okay so see usually in other species what happens the ureter will enter into the kidney and it will form an extended part called the renal pelvis okay so there's some mistake in this labeling i've labeled renal pelvis here in other animals the renal pelvis is situated here so it is the dilated part of the ureter but in case of ox a proper renal pelvis is not present or so you can say that it is not very much clear okay then at the hilus the ureter will enter obviously and then it will um, give off two branches or you can say two structures which are called calyx major or the major calyces the major calyces are two in number which then further divide into minor calyces okay so this is the major calyx one major calyx two and these are the minor calyces Then the parenchyma of the kidney is divided into two parts, an outer cortex and an inner medulla. The cortex in ox is partially divided into lobes by fissures filled with fat. It has two parts, the outer zona peripherica and inner zona juxta medullaris. Medulla, it is the inner part of the parenchyma and is divided into two parts, the external and internal medulla. Okay, so these further divisions of the cortex and medulla, they are not very much clear in a preserved specimen with C in this photo. This light part is zona peripherica of the renal cortex while the dark part is zona juxta medullaris of the renal cortex. Okay, So this whole thing is renal cortex and this part is the medulla. So the dark portion here here all these dark portion are the external part of the medulla while this light portion is the internal part of the medulla okay but in a fresh specimen you can easily uh, appreciate these things but in a very old preserved specimen you may not be able to see them clearly okay uh, the cortex and medulla they are very well uh, differentiated you can easily observe them but the, their further divisions are not very clear then medulla of ox is divided into a number of medullary pyramids which are radially striated and extend to the renal sinus as kidneys of ox has lobated surfaces the multiple medullary and multiple medullary pyramids it is classified as multi loba and multi pyramidal kidney so this point is actually very important why because it forms the basis of species differentiation okay so when we'll come to horse dog and pig we'll see what is the difference there okay so let us come back to this photo here you can see of course the cortex has divisions right so this is one part one lobe second lobe why because there are these fissures okay so the cortex is divided so it is multi lobated or multi lobulated and the medulla 
is divided into pyramids. So we have one pyramid, two pyramid, third pyramid, fourth pyramid, like that. Okay, so it is multi-pyramidal. Then the apex of these pyramids are called renal papillae, which project into the minor calyces. Okay, so let us come to the diagram. So see, this is the medullary pyramid and it is forming this very pointed end. Okay, so this is the renal papilla and the renal papilla is opening into the minor calyces. These are the minor calyces. Okay, then we have the blood supply and nerve supply. So the blood supply is by renal artery while the nerve supply is by renal plexus. So this is it for the kidney of ox. Now let us come to the kidney of dog, pig and horse. So the main differentiating factor that you are uh, going to see is the lobation. So whether the cortex is divided into lobes or not and the pyramids or we can say whether the medulla is divided or not. These are the main factors that you can use to distinguish between the various species. So see in the case of dog the medulla is single, so it is undivided. You can see some uh, pseudopapillae which may give the presence uh, or which you may give the impression of a renal pyramid or the medullary pyramid, but in case of dog, there are no such thing. There's one single medullary pyramid. There are no uh, divisions there. Okay, so these things, these are pseudopapillae. They are not actual divisions. So we have just one big medullary pyramid and one big cortex okay so we have no lobation and no division of medulla so see in case of ox i said that it is multi loba and multi pyramidal in case of dog it is uni loba and uni pyramidal kidneys okay location of the kidney is also different so in case of dog the right kidney is situated below the bodies of first three lumbar vertebrae and the left kidney is placed below the third to fifth lumbar vertebrae when the stomach is full. When the stomach is empty, the left kidney will go below to the second and fourth lumbar vertebrae. Okay. So in case of pig, now we'll see that there's some division. The medulla is divided. You can see these small medullary pyramids, but the cortex is single or it may be lobated. Okay, so what is going on? Uh, in case of pig, we can sometimes uh, see lobations, but they are usually two to three. Okay, so you will see two to three lobes of the cortex, while in uh, case of ox, you can see there are so many lobes. So this is one differentiating factor, but we can say that it is uniloba kidney in case of pig. Why? Because uh, the lobation is not always present, and even when it is present, it is very less. Okay, you will just see two to three lobes. But the medulla is definitely divided into various medullary pyramids, so it is multi pyramidal. Okay, dog was uniloba, unipyramidal, pig kidney is uniloba, multi pyramidal. Then at last we have the horse. Horse uh, kidney is very unique because the right and left kidney actually has different shape. So you can see the shapes in this picture. So in case of ox, we have one kidney uh, that is bean shaped, the right kidney. The left kidney is pyramidal. In case of dog, both kidney are somewhat uh, bean shaped. And in case of pig, again, they are slightly bean shaped, but they are elongated. Okay, so this is one differentiating point between the kidney of pig and the kidney of dog. That the kidney of dog is not so much uh, elongated, while the kidney of pig is very much elongated. Okay. And the unique thing about kidney of horse is that both kidney have different shape, completely different shape. So this is the left kidney here and this is the right kidney. The right kidney is heart shaped while the left kidney is bean shaped. Okay. So one very important point is that the right kidney is heart shaped. Again, okay, I have a diagram here. So you can see this is called the right heart shaped kidney. Okay, this kidney of horse, the right kidney of horse. Remember that. The position was also different. So the right kidney is situated below the proximal end of the last three ribs and the first lumbar transverse processes while the left kidney is placed near the median plane below proximal end of last rib and first two to three lumbar 
transfer processes okay so there's difference in the position and the shape now there are also certain special structures like renal crest and area cribrosa which are not present in case of dog uh, dog ox and pig okay so what are these first thing difference between ox and horse is that we can see a renal pelvis this is the renal pelvis in case of uh, dog and pig renal pelvis is also present but in case of ox it is absent or not uh, very well developed then you can see one thing this structure right here this is called the renal crest so what is the renal crest the central portion of the intra intra renal part of the medulla forms a concave ridge which projects into the pelvis and presents the orifices of the renal tubules okay so this medulla this whole part is medulla and what uh, it will do it will form a ridge okay a concave ridge and this ridge will project into the renal pelvis okay and this is called the renal crest and as i said that it presents the orifices of the renal tubules so what you will see uh, let us say this is the crest and you are uh, looking right at it and you can see these various orifices okay so you can say that it appears perforated right this area appears perforated that is why it is called area cribrosa so the ridge structure in this view that you can see uh, f renal crest this is the ridge and when you look right at it in uh, in the face then you can see that it has perforations and that is why we also call it area cribrosa okay so the surface is area cribrosa while the ray structure is renal crest uh, let me go back to this diagram again see this thing is renal papilla okay so the renal crest is counterpart of the renal papilla okay in ox dog and pig we will see renal papilla while in horse we have the renal crest instead so this is it for the kidney of ox dog horse and pig if you found this video useful then please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel thank you